whenever you got something really heavy, the devil always tries to mess you up. We're living in terrible times, dark times. We're, we're going to continue what I started a couple weeks ago. Uh, people on the internet said, would you f please finish that thing? Would you please finish it? And I said, oh, I'll, I'll do it. And then lo and behold, here, pastor asked me to teach today. So God wants this out. And be sure to pray for me because Whenever you get into this territory, the devil comes at you like a roaring lion, and he wants to devour you. Uh, this is Genesis 6 on steroids, the second half. And, of course, by the time you get finished, I got a third part, but I'll never, I, I probably won't go into that. The world is living in the darkest part of this 2,000 year church age. The Bible says that we're in a night time and the day, dawn, day is about to dawn. We're in the darkest part of the night and it's always right before the dawn. For decades the world, and I'm not talking about the price of gas, I'm talking about everything else. I was watching a video this morning where a, a man in California, speeds up his car and deliberately goes and hits a woman pushing a baby buggy and sends the woman flying over the car. And then he goes, uh, another good citizen hits, hits his car with a pickup truck and stops him because he's trying to get away. And then he goes to court and the judge gives him probation. That's the world we're living in. It hasn't quite got here yet, but it's, it's on its way. For decades, the world have been sleeping and snoring with the enemies right at the gate. Mankind believes the enemies will, will exalt them to a higher estate. When you read Genesis chapter 3, verse 5, this is what it's all about. The same lie that Eve was given. For, for God hath known that in the day that to eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. They don't know what good and evil is. They're so evil that they have no idea what is good is now bad. What is bad is now good. They promise them to exalt them, give them technology that will send them into outer space. God talks about this in Obadiah chapter 1 verse 4. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thyself among net, set thy nest among the stars, Hence, will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. Woe unto him that coveteth an evil covetousness to his house, that he may set his nest on high, that he may be delivered from the power of evil. You know what we look at? We watched all these, these uh, Star Trek episodes for years, and boy, we thought, man, wouldn't that be neat to be able to go to, to outer space? Well, one day you will be able to go in a flash without any rocket ship. But man wants to do everything without God. That's the problem. All this is going to happen in the future with God, but man does not want God. They would rather follow a devil. Isaiah chapter 4 verse, or 5 verse 14 says, Therefore hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth 
without measure. And, and their glory and their multitude and their pomp, he that rejoices shall descend into it. Now, there's probably people here that never want to receive Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. I've got good news for you. There's plenty of room in hell. It's enlarging itself all the time. The news media stop reporting on earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. And the Bible says that that's what volcanic eruptions and earthquakes are all about. Hell's enlarging itself. It's about ready to welcome you. But there's also good news. There's still room at the cross. And you need to find a place at that cross if you're not saved. If you are saved, I would be trying, I'd be praying all the time, confessing my sins and getting ready for that great day when Jesus Christ takes us out of here. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that you'll be with this message. I pray that you'll be with me, Lord. Lord, this is so important. Lord, help me not to mess it up, Lord. I pray that the Holy Spirit will will guide, direct, and, and control this stammering tongue, Lord. Lord, help us, for I ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. The world government. This week, the Bilderberger Society met in Washington. Usually it's secret, but today, or this week, they met openly in Washington. And they, dis they were discussing how the, what they were going to do about the world affairs. Now, I don't know about you, but in America, we vote for our politicians. Well, at least we used to. We don't vote anymore. It's like I was telling Brother Wright the other day. I said, you know, and I, I wrote this to a guy on the Internet. Every time an election comes around, they say, vote, 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 vote. Get, every, get this person in, and everything will be okay. And then we criticize the Democrats for doing the same thing over and over again, expecting the same, uh, different result. And the same thing happens each time. What, are we any different? Have we seen any changes in America since we've been all this voting and all this stuff going on? I don't know about you, but I haven't seen any difference. Nothing changes. It's all the same. Each party does the same thing that the other party says they're, going, they're not going to do. They do it. These people like Carl Schwab and Bill Gates, you would not let these people around your children. If you would, you're crazy. They're all crazy. They all think they're superior. They think that they look at us as bugs. And they're the only ones that can solve the world problems because they have a lot of money. I don't want anybody controlling my life except for the Lord God. And Him only will I serve. Genesis chapter 6 verse 4 says, There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And these same people became gods to the population, and they served them. They were giving their children, their daughters to them. And they were produ producing an, uh, a hydra race of beings that were that God would not tolerate. I talking to a guy from Guatemala a few months ago up here at the we were having a little cookout and he was he came to visit Sunday morning and he was there s Sunday night and we were having a little cookout afterwards and I always can I don't know how I do it I don't know if it's the Holy Spirit saying, talk to this guy. But I went up to him, and I said, uh, I heard you're from Guatemala. He goes, yes. He says, I said, what did you do in Guatemala? He says, I was in the military. And I said, well, that's great. I said, what did you do in the military? 
He says, well, I just wandered around, you know, in plain clothes most of the time. And I said, okay. I don't know. I, I guess I worked around him so much that I, I can spot him out. So I said, okay. I said, what do you know about the giants? He says, what? I said, what do you know about giants? Ronnie Crane was with me. He says, do you believe in giants? I go, yes, the Bible talks about giants. I said, I've read a lot about Guatemala. And I said, I know that they've been seeing creatures there. And I said, have you seen them? He looks at me wide-eyed, and he grabs a hold of my hand. And he goes, you're the first person in America that I can talk to about this. And I says, yeah, it seems like I have that kind of luck. <laughs> and he says, I've seen them. I've seen the big ones, and I've seen the little ones. And I says, yeah, I've seen the pictures of the little ones. And I asked, we talked a little bit more, and I said, what do you know about the reptilians? He goes, you know about the reptilians? I go, yes, I do. He says, I guarded a place that had these things in there, and I, kept, I was there to keep everyone out because it was dangerous to go in. And I says, yeah, they have the same problem over there in Peru. I was searching uh, Google Earth one time, and I ran into, uh, over in Peru, I found 10 of these things on the ground. Some of them were on the ground. Some of them were hovering just above the ground on Google Earth. And if you ever, if you want to really look at stuff, go on Google Earth Pro. But all this stuff is happening now. It used to be I'd watch maybe one UFO video, but since cell phones come out, now everyone's taking pictures of these, these things. And those are the different shapes that people have seen. Now I've seen, I've seen those. I've seen the triangular. Because I'm always looking in the air. You know, I'm, I'm like the kid that walks around like this, you know. <laughs> I, I took a picture of one right over above the church one time. They're here. Are you awake? Are you ready for the Lord Jesus Christ to return? Because we're going to get into the scriptures, hopefully, and the Bible tells us these things show up in the last days. Matthew chapter 24, verse, oh, if, Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. And I saw the wickedness of man that was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And he repented, and it repented the Lord. What repented the Lord? It, re, it didn't repent. He, he, he made man on the earth, and that Satan was taking his creation and turning it into something other than what he had created. And man was okay with it. That's the sad part. It's going to happen again. Matthew chapter 24, verse 22 says, Except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. We talked about that last time. And I believe it's because the DNA of man will be so corrupted by the time the Lord Jesus returns to take control of this earth that there would be no, no flesh. So he shortens the seven-year period. So what is imaginations? Imaginations are inventions. What inventions? Well, I think inventions are good. The car's good, you know, uh, the microwave, because it gets my meals to me faster. But what are imaginations? They're inventions. 
And God talks about these inventions in Psalms chapter 99, verse 8. Psalms chapter 106, verse 29 and 39. In verse 8 it says, Thou answereth them, O Lord, our God. Thou wast a God that forgavest them. Look thou, tookest vengeance of their inventions. What inventions? They had inventions that were pulling people away from God. And men were, were no longer satisfied with what God had created. They wanted to make something bigger and better. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Well, we're doing the same thing today. Psalms chapter 106, 29 says, Thus they provoked him to anger with their inventions. And the plague break in upon them. Verse 39 says, Thus were they defiled with the work, their own works and went a whoring with their own inventions. And that's the way our government is today. They're whoring after inventions that these creatures, these fallen angels, are giving them access to. I told somebody one time, I said, you know, after all these years, and I've been doing this for a long time, whenever there's the people over here that know, they're in the know, that knows what's going on, and are okay with it, and then there's this people over here that have no idea what's going on. And they think everything's okay as long as they got uh, gas in their car, food on the table, and they got access to their uh, vaccines and stuff. But what they don't know is what these people, how they, these people up here look at you as a bug, a weed. They call us eaters. God calls me the son of God. What does he call you? After the flood, man's rebellion again was showing up and God had to show grace by confounding the languages instead of total destruction. And yes, we are still talking in tongues. That's what languages are, tongues. Genesis chapter 11, verse 6, And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and this is talking about the Tower of Babel, and they all of one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing is restrained from them which they have imagined, here comes that word again, to do. And God says, let us go down and confound their languages. And he did. Thank God. Like I said, some, some inventions are good. However, the inventions today are all geared to pulling you away from God. Taking these young people and brainwashing them into thinking that they're going to be some kind of X-Men if they keep taking all this stuff into their body. When did all this happen? It goes all the way back to the beginning of this country, believe it or not. Satan already put his, his hold on this country before 1776, this country was full of born-again, Bible-believing Christians who believed in the Word of God. They taught their kids to read from the Word of God, and 98% of the population knew how to read and write. Now that we're away from the Bible, have you looked at the statistics of illiteracy in the United States? So why are they after our carbon fuel? Why do they want everything to be done with electricity? 
Luke chapter 10, verse 18, Jesus says, And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Now, I got this from Gene Kim, and I recommend that anyone who wants to study the Bible and get into deep stuff, you better start watching Gene Kim. This guy is, God has blessed him. And anyone who listens to him is going to be blessed. After he graduated from Ruckman School, he sat right back there on the fourth row back. He wanted to meet our pastor. He's a good man. Only 30 years, 30 some years old. Isn't that great? God is blessed. Oh. In order to control the world's population, they need electricity. Every time you pick up your phone, you're holding electricity in your hands. Every time you get addicted to a phone, there's electricity involved. We'll get into that here in a second. But all this goes, this, this, this plan went into effect as far back as 1492 when Columbus discovered America. A guy named Francis Bacon wrote a book called The New Atlantis. Francis Bacon was probably more than likely William Shakespeare. William Shakespeare is a pen name. He had all kinds of plans for this, this world. It was going to be the new Atlantis and modern cities, you know, and flying machines and all that stuff. May 1st, 1776, the Illuminati was created. July 4th, 1776, we signed the Declaration of Independence. This secret society had a hold on America. In 1782, they created the Great Seal of America. And you have it on the back of your dollar bill. And right between the two, the both ends of that seal, you got, in God we trust. I want to ask the question, what God do we trust? What God do they trust? They put this thing on the back of the dollar bill in, or they created this thing in 1782. When you want to find out what a, what a Satanist is up to, add the numbers together to see what you come up with. 1782 equals 18. 18 is 6, 6, 6. Three sixes, three times six. The secret of Freemasons put this on the back of the dollar bill. In 1935, add that all together, 18. They work like this. This is what they're all about. They're satanic. They put an unfinished pyramid on the back of this dollar bill. The, with an eye of Horus about ready to sit down on it. Now, if you know anything about demonology and stuff like that, you know, the number 72 means something, and that's how many blocks you have on that pyramid. But the 73rd block is the completion. And then you see this all-seeing eye about ready to sit down on America. All the bills in, a, in our currency has been changed but the dollar bill. Why? This eye is called, they call it the eye of God, but it's actually the eye of Horus, the eye of Osiris, Jupiter, Apollyon, you know what I mean? The list goes on. There are 13 steps to this pyramid. 13 is not for the number of colonies that this country was founded on. It's because 13 is a power number in 
the Masonic and Satanists. Thirteen steps. You have 13 stars on the other one, 13 berries, 13 leaves, 13 arrows, 13 feathers. The feathers, you have to add them all up, and then you multiply or divide it by 13, and then 13 letters and most of the letter or the words. The eagle is supposed to be a symbol for America, the bald eagle. Now, I, I sculpt eagles, so I know everything about eagle. I know every little, I can draw an eagle with no problem at all. But on the back of an eagle, there is no spike that comes out. But on the back of your dollar bill, you'll see a little spike coming out. That's a symbol for the phoenix. The phoenix is a symbol of the underworld. It dies, and it resurrects itself out of the ashes. When you saw the Twin Towers coming down, they crumbled like ashes coming down. There was no girders. There was no steel. It, it basically turned to powder. And all through the reconstruction of this one world tower, they were saying, it's like the rising of the phoenix out of the ashes. And they kept saying it over and over again. I don't know if you caught this, but this is... This is part of the Satanist belief. The phoenix represents Jupiter, Apollyon. Have, you, have, have we ever heard of Apollyon? Revelations chapter 9. Osiris. The phoenix is a fiery serpent that dies every 500 years and resurrects from the ashes. Now you're getting some deep stuff that's going on. I'm not here to scare you. If you know the Lord Jesus Christ, you should be rejoicing because he's coming back really soon. I'm excited. Of course, you know about the, the Antichrist during the three and a half, after the three and a half years, he dies. And then he's mysteriously resurrected from the dead. It's like the phoenix. The pyramid. Now, you want to study something really strange? Go online and start looking at what archaeologists are finding about pyramids. Some of these things are producing some type of power or currency. We look at the Egyptian pyramids and said, boy, there's the three pyramids over there, and boy, they're great and they're big and stuff. They got pyramids around the world they're finding they're six times bigger than that one. One down there in Mexico. There are thousands of these pyramids found all over the world, and they're in a grid. What? You can take these things and put them and draw lines connecting all of them in geometric forms all over the world. Some of these things are so old, there's one in India that they thought was a mountain. It has snow on the top. And they th wait a minute, look at this. These are blocks. This thing was built by man. And then they go over in Romania, they found one, the farmers were growing crops on the side of it. It was so big. And they got digging down and they found that this is a structure. Wait a minute, it's got pipes coming out of the bottom of this thing. And they thought it was a mountain. We're living in the dark ages, folks. You're not allowed to know this stuff. Archaeologists go to, they, they lose their funding when they try to reveal this stuff to man, to tell them our history is not what we've been told. The Bible's true, and all men are liars. And these things, I mean, they find them in the oceans.
men are willing to sell their souls for technology. Now, where did these, where did these pyramids come from? If you believe the gap theory, they could have come before and Satan might be trying to reestablish himself back here on earth with everything that he had before. But you're not included. But God. Thank God for God. Thank for the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank him for saving your souls, saving you from hell, and saving you from the devil. Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. And like we said last time, 1947, everything just kind of exploded. What kind of deals are these world leaders making and how is it going to affect us and our children? If you're, if you're lost, I wouldn't count on too much good coming out of it. If you're born again, the Lord Jesus Christ is going to take us out of here. And yes, we are going to escape. I'm convinced of that. I haven't found anything in the Bible that says I have to suffer and believe me, there are people suffering for the Lord Jesus Christ. There's more people dying for the Lord Jesus Christ today than ever before. There are more lawsuits in colleges against teachers that have browbeated these, these poor Christians and shamed them in front of their classmates because they believe in a almighty God. When the devil came to this earth, or when the devil was here on this earth and Jesus Christ shows up, the devil knew who he was, but like the pastor says, the devil knows God, he just doesn't know what he is. And all they've ever seen in heaven is the Lord Jesus Christ sitting on the throne, and Satan thinks he's smarter and greater than him, but he doesn't know who he's dealing with. None of these people know who they're dealing with. It says in Matthew 4, 8, it says, Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceedingly high mountain, shows him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he saith unto him, All these things will I give to thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Boy, what a condition. Don't go to the cross, you just got to fall down and worship me. Lord Jesus Christ, man, sh thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Before that, he told Jesus, you're hungry. You've been fasting for 40 days. There's a stone, turn it into bread. Satan knew that he could turn that stone into bread. But I don't know if he... He probably knew this. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 17, says, And he is before all things. Jesus Christ is before all things. And by him all things consist. One of the mysteries of the world in science is the fact that how in the world do these atoms hold together? How do they stay together? They should be flying out. You look at the universe and they're spiraling. Why don't they lose stars, you know? Because God says he holds all things together. Everything consists because of him. That's, that's the God we serve. Amen. I mean, think about it. Who is he? That's my God. Jesus Christ says, thou shalt not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And how many people really know this Bible? The more I dig in, the more I learn, the more I'm, I'm ashamed of what I don't know.
when Cain rejected God, he took on, he started following the fallen angels and started making deals with them. And some of those structures today, like I've told you before, they don't know how they build them. They're built out of solid rock. It would take a laser. And we don't even have that kind of technology today to build something like that out of laser. Some of these, these buildings would take up a city block. In some of these, these buildings, I told you, they opened up one vault and they found all these, it was full of jewels and gold and silver and crowns. And some of these crowns were so big, it'd take three people to hold it up on their head, maybe four. And there was four of these vaults, and they opened three of them. They're going to open the last one. Lucky them. <laughs> the governments have been turning away from God since 1947. We brought all these Nazis over here, and we turned them loose on America, and they now run this country, and that's why we're in a socialist, fascist-type system. Isn't that wonderful? Our own government has called, has trained what they call chantlers. They chantle ancient spirits of the other worlds to gain information and knowledge and technology from these creatures. We call them devils. The Bible calls them devils. And you don't make a deal with the devil. But we hire these people. We've been doing this for a long time. A lot of the stuff that you have that you think is modern technology probably came from them. And then we have what they call remote viewing. is where someone meditates and contacts a spirit, and the spirit relays to them what's going on in other countries. How evil, how wicked. Yeah. Where's our trust in the God that created us? Just like before the flood, this is where we're at today. It's been going on a long time. But the flood and the giants, the giants started taking on women right after men started giving birth to women or women started giving birth to, to daughters. <laughs> I'm thinking modern age. <laughs> they got me, got me brainwashed. Pastors have sold out their, their cities or their congregations for big buildings. I got a lot of call or emails about what, what are they going to tell? What are, what are the scientists going to tell us about the UFOs, you know? And I said, they ain't going to tell you nothing. I said, they're not going to get rid of their uh, cash cow. They're going to keep it all silent. And they didn't tell you nothing. They showed you one picture. Oh, that, well, that's really great. It ain't nothing. I mean, there's, there's Joe Blow down the street taking pictures of these big, gigantic UFOs and... And it, it don't make national news, but it'll make the internet. These creatures are getting so bold that they're not hiding anymore. Only God has breath. In Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 14, I read this last time. Every man is brutish in his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by his graven image. For his molten image is falsehood, and that's what all this stuff is. It's falsehood. It's a lie. And there is no breath in them. They are vanity and the works of heirs. In the time of their visit visitation, they shall perish. The same God that created them will destroy them by his spoken word. Revelation chapter 14 says, in verse 10, it says, The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, 
which is poured out without mixture into a cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angel and in the presence of the Lamb. They're not getting away. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 26 says, I will laugh, I will also laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. The Lord's not, oh no, you know, oh, it's terrible. The devil's getting the upper hand. Nah. God's still in control. God is in control. Does he control you? Is he living in your heart? Do you know him? Man's pride thinks of himself as being the top of the food chain. During the tribulation, God's going to take the fear of man away from the animals and see what food chain he comes at right at the bottom. If you're here and you little took, uh, your little little dog will start looking at you as dinner before it's all over with. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 40. There's also celestial bodies and terrestrials. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another, and God never intended for those to mix. I'm running out of time, so I'm going to drop down here. I got to reading Paul Harvey, Good Day, and the rest of the story. He says, if I were the devil. You ever read this thing? Man, is it accurate? It goes right down the line to the, to the nitty-gritty, and we're there. It, there's nothing else for the devil to do. He's probably thinking, well, what else am I going to do? You know, I've done it all now. I, if I were the devil, if I were the prince of darkness, I'd want to engulf the whole world in darkness. And I have a third of the real estate and four-fifths of the population, but I wouldn't be happy until I seize the ripest apple on the tree, the America. So I'd set about, however necessary, to take over the United States, to subvert the churches first. Boy, he did, didn't he? I'd begin with a campaign of whispers, with the wisdom of a serpent, I would whisper to you as I whispered to Eve. And remember, that's what we started out with. Do as you please. To the young, I would whisper that the Bible is a myth. I would convince them that man created God instead of the other way around. I would confide that what is good is what is bad is good, and what is good is bad, is square. You can tell what kind of year this was created in. We've got a crowd here that probably, under, probably heard this when it was first read. And the old I would teach to pray after me, our Father, which art in Washington, D.C. Are you doing that? I hope not. And then I'd get organized. I'd educate authors to, on how to make lured literature exciting so that everything else would appear dull and uninteresting. I'd threaten TV with dirtier movies and vice versa. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I would sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen of distinction. I'd tranquilize the rest with pills. Wow. I was, somebody wrote me the other day and, and I, I wrote him back. I said, every year, 30% more Americans die of overdose. Every year, it keeps getting worse and worse. 
when that number grows, that 30% is basically staying the same, but that number is growing. They're calling it the Mexican-China cartel. And your politicians are giving them free access. I'd threaten TV with dirtier movies and vice versa. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I'd sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen of distinction. I'd tranquilize the rest with pills. If I were the devil, I'd soon have families that war with themselves, churches at war with themselves, nations at war with themselves, until each in turn was consumed. And with promise of higher ratings, I'd have mesmerized media fanning the flames. If I were the devil, boy they are, aren't they? They're up in the war over there in Ukraine. If I were the devil, I would encourage schools to refine young intelligence but neglect to discipline emotions. That started back when I was a kid. Just let those run wild until before you know it, you'd have to have drug sniffing dogs and metal detectors at every schoolhouse door. With a decade, I'd have prisons overflowing. I'd have judges promoting pornography. Soon I could convict God in the courthouses and, and from the, or evict God from the courthouses and from the schoolhouses and from the House of Congress. And in his own church, I would substitute philosophy for, philosophy for religion and defy science. I would lure priests and pastors into misusing boys and girls and church money. If I were the devil, I'd make a symbol of Easter an egg and a symbol of Christmas a bottle. If I were the devil, I'd take from those who have and give to those who want until no, this is, I had killed the incentives of ambition. And what do you bet I would get the whole state to promote gambling as to make a way to get rich? I, could caution, I would caution against extreme and hard work in patriotism and moral conduct. I would convince the young that marriage is old fashioned, that swinging is more fun, and that and what is on TV is the way to be. And thus, I could undress you in public. I could lure you into a bed with diseases from which there is no cure. In other words, if I were the devil, I'd just keep right on doing what I'm doing. Good day. Is that, a, is that waking you up a little bit? We're there. Jude chapter, or Jude verse 10. But these things speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally as brute beast, in those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and run greedily after the heirs of Balaam, for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Kor. If you are born again, rejoice in the Lord. And I, again, I say rejoice because without him, we wouldn't have a chance. But with him, we have eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we're called a son of God, a co, a, a, co, a joint heir with Christ. My goodness, the person who holds everything in, that exists, he holds it together with, with his power, and we're going to be co-heirs with him. What a wonderful day. I, I get excited about this stuff. When I heard it was, today's the Feast of uh, Pentecost, and I was getting excited last night. I said, oh, Lord, you know, if I, if, wake me up if I, if the trumpets blow, I don't want to be asleep when this happens. <laughs> but, I, but I get excited every feast day. Now, God, Jesus Christ can come anytime. 
He could come anytime. We're not, we're not part of the Jews. God can take us anytime, anywhere. But I always get excited around the feast times. And I pray that, you know, if, that you take this to heed. Tell your family. Tell your loved ones that are lost. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. We thank you, Lord, for loving us. We thank you, Lord, for the precious word. Lord, I pray that you'll be with our pastor as he travels. I pray that you'll give him plenty of rest, him and his wife, Linda. I pray that you'll bring him back safely. And I pray, Lord, that you'll be with our speaker today, Mr. Edson. I pray that you'll fill him with the Holy Spirit. And I pray that if there's anyone here today that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, that today will be the day of their salvation. There's no time to waste, Lord. Thank you for being my God, my King, for asking the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.